Hey, good evening to you. I'm Pearson Bowen. Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinclair has sounded a warning to all tax avoiders that government will not be dealing with them lightly. He says tax avoidance in Barbados has now reached epidemic proportions. Minister Sinclair made the comments last evening as Parliament wrapped up debate on the International Business Miscellaneous Provisions Bill 2014. That bill is intended to grant indefinite licenses to international businesses. There is a, there is now rising almost to a level, uncomfortable level, of tax avoidance and non-payment of taxes in Barbados. And it is becoming routine. And we have to let people understand that that is not the basis on which this society can be run. Mr. Sinclair says the newly established Barbados Revenue Authority will be given whatever legislative powers it needs to ensure that all taxpayers honor their obligations. That if it becomes necessary, I am prepared to bring an amendment to this House of Assembly and fight it through. That the Barbados Revenue Authority be given so. the appropriate authority to ensure that persons, that this situation where people, persons believe that they can avoid X tax and do Y business and just go along with it cannot just be done now making it abundantly clear. Well, now for your take tonight, we'd like to hear directly from you on this issue. Our question tonight is, do you believe that government should adopt stricter tax collection policies? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results at the end of the news. International credit rating agencies Moody Investment Services is disagreeing with the central bank's recent projection of 0.3% growth in this island's economy by the end of the year. Ryan Broom reports. In a four-page report published this week, Moody's is projecting a 1% year-over-year contraction in Barbados' economy for 2014. Moody's says given the larger budget gap in the last fiscal year, it now estimates that government will need a total adjustment of at least $450 million or 5.2% of projected 2014 GDP to reach the deficit objective in the current fiscal year. The agency also says while public sector layoffs have reduced government's wage bill by about 9%, transfers and subsidies, the largest item on the expenditure side, have declined by only 1.6%. At the same time, interest expense has increased by 14%. Moody says it expects fiscal consolidation to accelerate over the next three quarters, but believes government will remain constrained by revenue underperformance, the difficulty inherent in reining in transfers and subsidies, and rising interest costs. The ratings agency has also noted declines in Barbados's foreign reserves when compared to the same period last year, and believes that any further erosion would likely put further pressure on Barbados's currency. When contacted for comment, Finance Minister Christopher Sinclair indicated that he had not had a chance as yet to peruse the Moody's report and was therefore not prepared to comment at this time. Ryan Broom, CBC News. Government signed the Economic Partnership Agreement with Europe on behalf of the private sector and non-state actors on the island. This assurance from the Leader of Government Business in the Senate and Foreign Affairs Minister, Senator Maxine McLean, as she stressed that it is the private sector that leads trade. She wants its players to take advantage of the agreement. Senator McLean's comments came during debate on the Economic Partnership Agreement Bill 2014 in the Senate. We are seeking to, to ensure that the, the government um, is able to assist the private sector, but it is the private sector which has to be entrepreneurial, which has to be proactive, and which has to be bold to go out there and seize those opportunities. We in, in the ministry, for example, my ministry can do a number of things. Independent Senator Professor Henry Fraser wants Barbados to use the EPA legislation as a catalyst to develop manufacturing. 
So there are so many things that we can mention where Barbadians should be getting to work and manufacturing and exporting. I was very much aware of the emphasis that has been made recently on the export of our music and our performing arts. This tends to be wonderful for the individual performing artist. Barbados Labour Party spokesman, the Reverend Joseph Atherley, expects the party's full parliamentary group to march tomorrow against the solid waste tax. Over the weekend, one prominent opposition member, St. James Central MP Carrie Simmons, announced on a call-in program that he would not take part. However, speaking at a press conference this afternoon, Reverend Adderley stressed that Mr. Simmons was in solidarity with those opposed to the tax. People have pointed to Mr. Simmons' recent um, statements, but I'm sure I heard with my own ears yesterday Mr. Simmons call on all Barbadians <laughs> and he included government representatives to come out and to be a part of that march. And I think, did he not commit himself to be in there as well? Oh, I think he did. So I, I don't know where the disagreement is on the action to be taken tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know where the disagreement is on the action to be taken tomorrow. Because um, those whose, um, whose names are referenced in relation to that um, division over that matter have publicly taken action or made statements to suggest that the, the party needs to do this. Well, the march starts at noon at Heroes Square and ends at the traffic lights near government headquarters. President of the Clement Payne Movement, David Comachong, supports opposition leader Mia Motley in her decision to march for the municipal solid waste tax to be repealed. Speaking at a press conference at the Clement Payne Centre this morning, he stressed that marches and protests have played an active part in Barbados history. However, Mr. Comachong is undecided as to if he would be taking to the streets tomorrow afternoon. Those kinds of developments should be welcomed in Barbados because they say that we are, we are getting back in tune with our revolutionary tradition. We are getting back in tune with our tradition of activism. We are getting back in tune with our tradition of saying there's always something that can be done. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart will officially open the third Barbados Network consultation at the Lord Erskine Sandiford Centre on August the 5th. Over three days, 250 Barbadians, their descendants and friends of Barbados from both at home and abroad, will participate in seminars, workshops and panel discussions. They're built around the conference theme, One Nation, One Family, Building Pathways to Prosperity and Development. The central goal of the consultation is to encourage and facilitate Barbadians overseas to contribute to the social and economic development of our country. Local entrepreneurs will also have an opportunity to display and promote their goods and services with the aim of targeting possible export markets in the diaspora. A highlight of this year's conference will be the Cabinet Diaspora Interactive Session, during which the Prime Minister and other members of his Cabinet will speak and respond to questions and queries regarding their respective portfolios that pertain to Barbados development. Reports about unauthorized withdrawals from automatic telemachines have prompted police to advise Barbadians to be cautious. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector David Welch tells CBC News lawmen are investigating reports from people who say they've noticed money missing from their bank accounts and further checks revealed that the money was debited but from the ATM using, well, without their knowledge. As a result, Inspector Welch says the public needs to be extra vigilant when conducting transactions at the ATM. Coming up after this break, a case made for the issue of HIV AIDS as it relates to older people to be put on the front burner.
this got into a car accident Now you have to fix it and you don't have a cent Don't worry, don't worry, be happy Your home got flooded out and you've lost it all And chances to recover start to look very small Don't worry, don't worry, be happy Don't worry, be happy Beacon will cover you And we'll always see you through In everything you gotta do We'll be there for you Want to live the worry-free life today? Call us at Beacon or log on to beacon.co.tt and we'll be happy to help you get there. Beacon Insurance. Switched on. It's time for Back and Out Time to present the best of Crop Over. Wednesday, July the 30th at Jim with Matt, Big Yari, Peter Ram, Hyper Soundstone, Gorg, Lil Rick, Red Plastic Bag, Porgy and Murder, Blood, Mikey, Imani and Sight Terrari, The Comedy of Laugh It Off, and more. It's the best of the best in Black and All Time, Wednesday, July the 30th at the gym. Taking $70 available from CS Pharmacy, Shell, Black Rock and Charles, Road Rage, AMD Music, Sheraton, All Marks, All the Spears, and All Ticket Follow Plex. Dispel the myth that older people do not contract HIV AIDS, that message from Social Care Minister Steve Blackett, who wants the issue put on the front burner. His comments came during the opening of a training workshop dubbed HIV and the Elderly, Safe Today, Healthy Tomorrow, hosted by the Ministry of Social Care and the National Assistance Board at the Acre Beach Hotel. Mr. Blackett says his ministry will be ramping up the delivery of a comprehensive package of psychosocial services for people living with HIV and affected households. The Ministry of Social Care, Constituency Empowerment and Community Development and extension to social service agencies within its ambit are committed to ensuring that affected households have access to psychosocial support in order to mitigate against poverty, marginalization and discrimination. The Ministry's commitment to these interventions is consistent with the National Strategic Plan 2014 to 2018. The Social Care Minister, however, expressed concern about the lack of data on people li over 50 living with HIV. Now, a perusal of the literature revealed that older persons are invisible in the international data on HIV infections and prevalence. And according to the World Health Organization 2010, despite the global attention being paid to the epidemic, HIV infection rates among older adults have been a neglected area of study. There will be a Cahabla pot this year. Confirmation of this has come from the National Cultural Foundation's Chief Executive Officer Cranston Brown. Earlier, there was concern that the event may not be staged owing to the absence of one of the major stakeholders. Brown was speaking at the Grantley Adams International Airport following Queen Rita's arrival. And Cobble Pot will take place at Kensington Oval on the 3rd. So I can, uh, you know, let that be known. You will have the details in terms of the cast and all that on Friday. And then we'll do some promotional activities next week for Cobble Pot. But it, it, it is going to happen and we are gearing up for everything. Mr. Brown says he is pleased with the way the festival has gone so far and he is looking forward to the upcoming events. Expect good performances at Kensington Oval on August the 1st. That's the message from the finalists of the Pick of the Crop competition that they're sending to the patrons. Yesterday, they drew their positions at the National Cultural Foundation's headquarters in West Terrace. The order is Classic, Mikey, Miguel, Crystal Cummins Beckles, Ian Webster, Blood, Biggie Irie, The Announcer, Kid Sight, and Adrian Clark. Of the 10, two are former monarchs and three are first timers while the others have appeared in the finals before. The former monarchs are seeking another crown. I make some changes. Um, I write, I bring my finals lyrics and my finals performance. Um, it is all going to pick nine. I've worked with any position over the years, all kind of positions, one, two, three, four, right through. I've been here about 19 times now, so nine, I'll work with nine. I'm going to do my best, for sure. And let me tell you something. I am coming for you, and you know who I mean. I am coming for you. I will sing last, and hopefully they will call my name last the night too. I'm playing around. I got two crowns, and I think it's about time I put another trophy next to the 
the other two there, so are staring at me in the house. Meantime, the first-timers are promising to give the veterans a stiff challenge. I intend to pull out some stops too. Uh, I can do my thing and I, I think I will show people I'm very, very serious about this as well. The not I serious about sweet soak and the not I serious about party. I can show the nice series for picking the crop as well. Same thing as you would expect if I were in the finals, a great performance. My best foot forward and everything I got. Regional news ahead, but first we want to hear from you on this question. Do you believe government should adopt stricter tax collection policies? Text yes or no to short code 8111. Those